Magellan Jerome Alexander, and I'm with Magellan College Counseling, and I'm based in the Los Angeles area. And today I have with me Michelle Silbernagel, who is in Sammamish, Washington, just outside of Seattle. And it's kind of the time of year when students are choosing their courses for the next year. So we wanted to chat with you today a little bit about what courses you might want to choose. So Michelle, talk to us for a little bit about um, advice that we give students who are making these decisions. So when students around this time are considering their courses, sometimes they're thinking primarily about their graduation requirements for their high school. And what we like to point out to kids who are college bound is that those graduation requirements are often not the same as the college minimum requirements. In fact, um, in order to be competitive, you need to consider what the colleges would like to see. And what they like to see is what we call four of the core. And that's our tricky way of saying four years, ninth through 10th grade, or 12th grade of the five core courses, which are math, science, English, social science or history, a world language. And is that all of them? Did I get that? Was fine. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, um, so we suggest that students take those four courses. And actually, what I want to suggest for for like ninth and tenth graders is map that out um, as you're sitting down and you're looking at your course catalog map those four years out and, and get a little plan of what it is you think you want to study and, and the point you'll reach, what, what those math classes might look like for you. Yep, and, um, and some kids uh, here in California, if, uh, if they want to make their schedule a little bit less uh, crazy during the school year, they might pull one of those into a summer school class. So that's totally fine, that counts. But the point that um, is really important that we want to make is you really want to strive for four years of those five core courses if you can. There are absolutely exceptions to that rule. Um, let's talk for a minute, though, about rigor. So a lot of kids will say, I know colleges are looking at my GPA and looking at my grades, and grades are super important, especially with test scores being less important these days. So should I take um, an AP or honors class if I might struggle in it and maybe get a B, or should I take the, the regular level of that class when I know I can get an A? So what I would say to stu a student in this situation is to consider what the opportunities are in their high school, because that's what the colleges are looking at. They have a school report of your high school. It's like a, a cover letter to your transcript, and it lists out all the different courses that are available, including all the APs or IBs, and it lists out how many students typically take those. So you're being considered within the context of your high school, what other students typically do, what you're taking advantage of. And so uh, we're not saying um, take every single AB course and, and struggle through and get a B. We're saying consider what it is that you're interested in, play to your strengths. If you took an honors English um, in ninth grade and you have an opportunity to bump it up a level in 10th or 11th grade, consider that if that is an area you're interested in. Uh, and then same thing with science or, or math. What would you add to that, Evelyn? Well, I often get questions about how many APs should I take? How many honors and APs should I take? And uh, the important point about what Michelle is saying is colleges will see what you have access to, right? So if you take regular level US history, but they know, they can see on your school profile that you your school has AP US history. Now we're not here to say you should take every honors and AP class that you possibly can. What we are here to say is, um, you should really, like Michelle is saying, plan out your year so you can see on paper, like how many APs, you know, are there available to me or honors and how many should I really take knowing how hard I'm capable of working, how much effort I need to put into each of those honors or AP classes. You want to really um, think in advance about if your grades will slip if you take too many honors or AP classes because you don't want the grades to slip. You want to do the absolute best you can. But I would say if you have a choice between an honors level, an honors or AP level and a regular level if you think you can do well um, a b is still a good grade right um if you know you can succeed in an honors or ap level class i would probably try to take that class i i wouldn't take five or six if you think that burden is just gonna 
you know, kill your year. And so this is where parents, you really have to step in and really talk this through with your kid and, and together really think about, how, you know, how much rigor can I really handle? Yeah. And another question we always get often is sometimes students start their well, their world languages early. Um, they, they start in eighth grade. And so that maybe they reach Spanish three by, by junior year or sophomore year, and they're kind of done. Um, and, you know, my advice for these students is to think about, okay, what are your college aspirations? You know, do you want to go to a school that is super competitive? Because then you can consider yourself in, within the context of the pool of the other applicants who right. probably have that fourth year of language. Yep. If you're not so concerned about that, um, or maybe if you're a super strong science or STEM student, then you can challenge yourself, but you need to make sure that you're taking a, a challenging class in another core area. Yep. Um, we, we never suggest dropping a core course or an elective. Right. So here's an example of that. I, lo I love it when parents call me and say, well, he's done with Spanish because he did two years. Ooh, there's no done. AP means done. You're not done. You've hit the minimum requirement, right? And this is again, where you look again, like Michelle said, look at where you're striving to get, right? If you live in a state, like I'm in California, you know, hitting the minimum requirements for the University of California system does not guarantee that you will get in, right? The pool is significantly more competitive. Um, and of course, if you're looking at privates, you know, upper level, super selective privates, you have to understand that the pool of kids who apply are absolutely going to have, you know, four years of all four plus, plus, plus. So for example, um, if you decide that foreign language is not your best friend and you, like I, I talked with a 10th grade mom yesterday and the student had taken two levels of Spanish, hated it, not good at it, doesn't want to keep going. He's going to take level three um, over the summer and then we're going to call it done, but he's going to add an extra science because he's a science kid and there's a whole bunch of science electives available at his school. So you really you really have to kind of see like where are we trying to get and then sort of choose your path based on that. And don't think of this as a pejorative prescription. Think about this as preparation. I mean, you're going to be a student out in the world engaging in society. So taking a history or a global government class is really good information to have. Colleges yep. want engaged students who are informed about the world. Totally. And so you're going to be set um, and you're going to be ready to go. You're going to have that foundation. You won't have had a missing year of math that senior year. You, um, you'll be ready to take your courses when you hit your campus as a freshman. Yep, I totally agree. And the one thing I would add is when you get to the point where you say, I'm, I'm done, I'm done with math, I've done all the math that's offered by my school. If, if that happens to you in 11th grade, take a look at a local community college and see what's available there. You know, college, especially the selective colleges, they, they, they don't consider you done. There's no such thing as done because there literally is always another math, science, history, English, foreign language above and beyond what is offered in your school. You just have to go out and look for it. And colleges will be impressed if you, if you go beyond what is offered to you. So I guess that's the last of our advice. And hopefully that's helpful as you get going on your college search.